Two years in the making, President Obama formally unveiled the final steps of his clean power plan to fight global climate change. Levels of carbon dioxide, which heats up our atmosphere, are higher than they've been in 800,000 years. The new plan will require cutting carbon pollution from power plants by 32 percent by 2030. That's compared with 2005 levels. It's a jump from the previous target of 30 percent. Right now, the White House says power plants are the source of about a third of America's carbon pollution, more than cars, homes and airports generate combined. Here's how it works. Over the next few years, each state will have the chance to put together its own plan for reducing emissions because every state has a different energy mix. Some generate more of their power from renewables. In a state like New Jersey that has had 22 major floods and been devastated by Hurricane Sandy and Irene and, and Lee and Tropical Storm Lee and everything else, we're seeing firsthand the impacts of climate change. Though the president's numbers are slightly higher, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, says since 2000, we've experienced 13 of the 15 warmest years on record, including 2014, the hottest year ever recorded. Environmental groups credit New Jersey for having some of the toughest emissions laws in the nation, but say Governor Christie has held the state back, especially after pulling out of Reggie. And what's the number one greenhouse gas emission? Number one source of greenhouse gases here in the state are still our cars and trucks on the road. So that's not to say this plan does everything. There's still more to do. And focusing on how to green our transportation sector has got to be a focus, if not for this gubernatorial administration, than for the next. The plan won't go through without a fight. Opponents have already sued to put the rule on hold. Many Republicans, including Governor Christie, say the cost will end up on the backs of American citizens. We've already got on the record in New Jersey with a letter to the EPA opposing it. Um, this is, again, the overregulation of the Obama administration. The State Department of Environmental Protection fleshed out that position today. New Jersey reduced CO2 emissions from its power sector by 33 percent from 2001 to 2012, more, they say, than the EPA's requirement. In the proposed rule, EPA only credits states for post-2012 CO2 emission reductions and gives no acknowledgement of New Jersey's pre-existing carbon-free nuclear power, a spokesperson said. In fact, since just 2008, New Jersey has cut emissions by 21 percent, putting us on track to meet the 2030 goal. Environmental groups and advocates of the president's plan will gather tomorrow in Jersey City along with the mayor to voice their support. States will now have an additional two years to submit their details as to how they'll comply. In Newark, I'm Brianna Venosi, NJTV News.